What is up insaners and welcome to our strategy guide video for game week 33. Now lots of stuff coming up in this one. We're going to talk about the fixtures in game week 33 including the teams that are blanking this week. We'll also be looking at some exciting players to watch out for this week. Now we'll finish the video with our team selection and the best captain picks for game week 33. Now guys game week 32 is still on and I hope it's been a good week for you. It's worked out really well for us. We've moved down the 50,000 rank in the world. Now the Greenwood punt really worked like a charm. Hopefully we can keep up around the same and move towards a 10k mark now. Guys if you new around here make sure you subscribe to our channel insanely football. Give this video a thumbs up if you like today's video and let's get into it. We'll start with the fixtures for game week 33 and focus also on the fixtures which are looking good from an FPL point of view. We have 8 games starting this week with a huge one to begin. It's Arsenal versus Everton, big game in the context of places for Europe. Everton needed more badly than Arsenal and they should go all in for this one. Arsenal might have a different approach guys. They're still in the Europa League and have a chance to get that Champions League place through Europa. It will be interesting to see how Arteta and his team approach this one. Next Liverpool face Newcastle at Anfield. Now Liverpool are still stuck in 7th place. They need to start winning consistently if they want to get that Champions League place. Now Newcastle have improved and find themselves 8 points off relegation. Now any points here would secure their safety this season. Their recent performances suggest that it might not be a straightforward game as a lot of people are thinking, but Liverpool should win this one. Then guys we come to another mega clash between the London clubs Chelsea and West Ham. Now this is a very important game. Both are still in the fight for that fourth place and a win here for either team is going to be huge. Both have good defenses and this might be a really close one to call. Our fourth game this week is the relegated club Sheffield United facing Brighton. Now this is a game a lot of managers would be focusing on, especially from a defensive point of view. Brighton's defensive numbers look really good and a clean sheet is a possibility in this one. A win here would also help Brighton move further up in the table and create more problems for Fulham who are still in a relegation spot. Then next we have Wolves facing Burnley. Both are relatively safer in terms of the relegation battle. I feel Wolves would aim for a bit more with a top 10 finish in sight. They have got two wins in their last two games and a win against Burnley would surely get them close. Now Burnley would also want a bit more to ensure their safety in the league this season and they would definitely go for that win. Then we have another interesting clash guys it's Leeds versus Manchester United a high scoring game last time I think it was 6-2 I don't think so it'll be that easy or even that high scoring Leeds are making it tough for the top ranked teams now and have tightened at the back Now Man United would also want to keep their momentum going and a win here should make their second place quite safe from the chasing pack Our second last game is Aston Villa versus West Brom Villa have clearly struggled without Grealish guys and their form is not great either With only one win in their last five games, West Brom might just fancy their chances. They're definitely the informed team among the fighting group that includes Fulham. You never know, guys. Big Sam might just throw in a few surprises, and that might be really interesting. We finish the week with Leicester facing Crystal Palace. Now Leicester is another team fighting for a Champions League place at the moment. A win would be huge for Rodgers, who's aiming for another Leicester season in the Champions League and finish as close as possible at the top. Now four teams don't have a game in game week 33. These are Tottenham, Man City, Southampton and Fulham. This is because of the clash with the EFL Cup final between Spurs and City. Now it would be ideal if you can keep two to three players from these teams on the bench. Selling them is also an option. Now there are a few players that you can target and they just might be worth taking a hit for. So with that, let's get into the players to target for game week 33 and beyond. The first player we're going to cover is Connor Cody from Wolves. I feel we've covered him enough in the last few weeks. but wolves are looking worth investing from a defensive point of view there are a few options like sias and samedo but the one that stands out for me is conor cody he has three clean sheets in his last five games his price is below the 5 million mark right now at the time of recording this video i think it's expected to increase so get him in your team if you are a bit tight on budget he provides a decent goal threat as well so overall i think is a good option and xg of more than one over the last five games for a defender i would say that is pretty good right next few fixtures are also looking okay Wolves face Burnley, West Brom and Brighton. I feel none of the teams are known for their attacking ability, so I'd fancy Wolves to keep a couple of clean sheets here. Our next player is also a defender and a mighty impressive one guys. His numbers since game week 27 have looked really good. He's top for chances created among all defenders. His four big chances and an expected assist of 2 plus also ranks the highest among all defenders. Now Liverpool have a really good run of fixtures till the season end and with only a top four finish left to play, I think it's a very solid move. Obviously Trent is not cheap and comes at a huge price but if you can afford him I think he's definitely worth considering this week. 
One more thing to note here is that Nat Phillips had an hamstring issue in the last game against Leeds. If that's the case, then an upgrade from Phillips to Trent also looks good this week. Our third player is a midfielder and it's James Rodriguez from Everton. The Colombian has started the last three games for the Toffees, getting a total of 20 points including a double-digit haul. Now this week it's Arsenal, which might be a little tricky, and they are a good team defensively, but Everton might just go for it, and if they do, guys, Rodriguez is gonna play a very important part. His price is decent and provides a great option to replace the likes of Son in your team. His ownership is below 10% right now, and it will be even lower in the top 10,000 ranks. Now coming to Everton's fixtures, till game week 37, they look more than decent, plus they have that extra game against Aston Villa that needs to be scheduled. This means that there will be at least one double game week for him. Now injuries and his fitness is a bit of a concern, but Everton is definitely going to push for Europe, and this could mean more minutes for Rodriguez. Can that translate into more FPL points? I think we'll have to wait and watch, but he looks like a really good pick for the coming weeks. Next, we come to our punt last week, guys. It's Mason Greenwood from Manchester United. What a game against Burnley, his second consecutive double-digit haul, and his fourth goal in United's last five games. His 17 shots rank second only to Salah's 20 during the same time. His points tally is also second just behind Jesse Lingard for the last five weeks. Now, he's showing great progress in the league, and with Bruno Fernandes blanking quite often now, I think he's looking like a very powerful replacement. Now, one issue is his game time. I still think he won't start all the games from now till the season end. The fixtures include Liverpool and Leicester. They can be tricky opponents, but he can score points even if he comes off the bench. I think something that we've already seen against Tottenham this season. I would advise you to give a serious consideration to Greenwood for your team this week. Let's talk about a couple of forwards now. Our first name is Ollie Watkins, another player who's silently done his job and has been of great value especially if you consider the likes of Vardy, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Lacazette, who are way more in price than him. His numbers have come down since Grealish's injury, but with West Brom, Everton and Crystal Palace in their next five, there is potential for some points for Watkins. Now, this becomes even better if Grealish returns to the playing 11. I still feel Watkins' price is great. It gives you a lot of flexibility to invest elsewhere. And if you are looking to replace the forwards like Jay Adams or even Antonio, if you still have him by any chance, I feel Watkins can be a really good option. We come to our last name in this list, guys, and it's the El Matador, Edinson Cavani from Manchester United. Now, he's been ticking all the right boxes for United this season. Martial's absence has meant more minutes for the former PSG forward, and he's enjoying life at United. His numbers look okay, with two goals in his last three games. His price is probably slightly higher, but that's because he's a United forward at the end of the day, right? Now, my only concern here is his fitness and minutes on the pitch. He's definitely not in that sort of a stage where he will give you 90 minutes every game, so you will have to keep that in mind. He will be rotated with Greenwood, probably starting up top, and Cavani coming on at half time or even for the last 20 to 30 minutes. Now, there are some other options as well, but with only 3% total ownership right now, he's a great differential to have in attack. I'm sure not many managers will go for him, but then this is where you can differentiate. He definitely has the potential to give you points, so you should consider him in your forward planning this week. Guys, these are some players to watch out for for game week 33 and worth keeping for the next few weeks as well. Now let's get into our next section, which is the wildcard draft for game week 33. Guys, we'll also talk about a few changes in case you want to free hit this week. Now this is the team we have for our wildcard in game week 33. Our team value is 104.2 million. So just a small note before getting into the team. Your team value can be different guys. And accordingly, you might be able to afford better or worse players, depending on whether it's high or low. Now in goal, we have Martinez instead of Mendy. This might be a tricky move, but the next set of fixtures look okay for Villa. You can also go for the likes of Mendy. Now, he was just benched against Brighton, but I feel that was more of a rest than anything else. If you already have a Chelsea defender, I think it's okay having Martinez as he still manages to give you some safe points every match. Chelsea don't concede a lot of shots, something that makes the Martinez move look okay in this team. Our second keeper is Foster, who we've kept for the last few games of the season. If you want and have the budget, you could also go for someone like a Sanchez from Brighton, whose defensive numbers look good. In defence, guys, we don't have any double-ups on any teams, and five defenders from five different teams. The more attacking options are Trent, Dallas and probably Cody if you consider corners and free kicks. Dallas is more of a long-term move post the United game. He scored in the last game against United, so it might just be worth playing him this week as well. But I think Brighton and Spurs are games where Leeds can score, so it looks fine. You can also have Shaw instead of him if you have the budget. Now Shaw has been in great form this season and can be another great hold if you already have him in your team. You can also go for an Arsenal defender, someone like a holding if you don't have the budget. Now, Arsenal don't keep a lot of clean sheets, but he might just be worth his super cheap price. The other defenders we've gone for are Fofana and Rudiger, 
who might not provide a lot of attacking threat guys but should guarantee some clean sheets and bonus points. Both have some pretty good fixtures especially for Fana from Leicester. In midfield we have a double up on Liverpool with Salah and Jota. Both have looked good recently and Liverpool have a great run of fixtures. I think it'll be hard to miss out on this combo. Now coming to our third midfielder, Lingard has been in mad form guys. I think regardless of the fixture, Lingard should be a part of your midfield. West Ham have Chelsea this week, but then it's a good run till season end. Next we have Mason Mount and he's more of a safe pick here and this could be a lot of players if you want. Now with a lot of money remaining in the bank, you can do Bruno Fernandes or even Rashford. Alternatively, you can also go for Pulisic or even Havertz from Chelsea. Arsenal players like Saka are a bit risky, but some other options include Rodriguez from Everton or even a punt on someone like an Adama Traore for the next couple of games. So you have a lot of options there and you can take your pick. Our final pick in this team guys is Mason Greenwood. Now he's more of an explosive cover for Bruno Fernandes. I still think he's going to be featured in majority of the games for United from now till the end of the season. So overall I think he's a high value pick. In attack we've gone for three cheap options in Edinson Cavani, Enacho and Oli Watkins. The money remaining will help us get Kane probably for Cavani in the next game week as we already have a United cover in midfield. Now Watkins and Enacho are great cheap enablers and they allow us to save a lot of money and spend in other areas. Now if I'm doing a free hit there are some changes that I would do for game week 33. Obviously this draft won't have big hitters from Man City and Tottenham as they don't feature this week. Guys, I would have Sanchez in goal in place of Martinez. Sheffield United as opponents could mean a clean sheet, hence the change. The defenders also see a bit of movement with Rudiger, Dallas and Fofana going out and Pereira, Dunk and Shaw coming in for this week. In midfield, we just have one change with Rodriguez coming in for Mount. Now, both players have tricky games, but Rodriguez can have a really good game against Arsenal. In attack, we've gone for a double up on Leicester instead of Cavani as Crystal Palace might be easier to crack as compared to Leeds. Our final forward Watkins retains his place from our wildcard squad. Now this was our wildcard and free hit draft for game week 33. Guys let me know in the comments below if you agree with this or not or you have better changes to suggest. Now game week 32 is not finished yet but this is how our team is doing right now. We are around the 55k mark right now with Enacho still to play. Good points off the bench too for Phillips as Rudiger comes on for a 7 pointer. I think the only thing that didn't work for us this week was none of our keepers playing. Mendy surprisingly didn't start against Brighton and Foster was also on the bench against Tottenham. I feel rest everything worked out pretty well. The Tottenham duo did really well. Obviously Kane did not play in the second game but Son did the job for us. Hopefully guys Kane is fit for game week 34. I think there's still some time for that. Lingard as usual gave us a return but the highlight has to be Greenwood giving us that 15 pointer. That was massive guys. Very very happy with that. That's one of the reasons we got a decent jump in rank this week. Overall I think our defence could have given us some more points and two pointers from Holding and Shaw were not that great. Pretty happy still and we move on to our team for game week 33. Guys this is our team for game week 33. For now we're playing a back four. Phillips is flagged right now and we have a transfer planned for it and we'll come to that. Other than that Shaw, Holding and Rudiger come in defence. Now Mendy is a double up on the Chelsea defence. We'll see the Leicester game in game week 32 and post that we'll take a call on whether we need to play MRT or Rudiger. That's definitely a doubt in my mind right now. Leicester vs Palace looks like a better fixture, at least on paper, so we'll see. In midfield guys, we have a 4 with Greenwood, Lingard and a double up on Liverpool attackers, Mo Salah, who has the captain's armband for now, and Jota. Lingard against Chelsea would be an interesting watch. Now Chelsea have looked good in defence and Lingard has been brilliant for West Ham in attack. But yeah, it's a tough one for fantasy managers and a tough one to call. I want to keep Lingard, so I don't think so I'll be changing him anytime soon. This midfield 4 looks good for the coming games too. Now Son is not playing, so he's on the bench for this week. In attack guys, we're playing a front 2 with Chris Wood and Iannaccio. Now Wood scored in the reverse fixture against Wolves. I don't think so, it's a guaranteed clean sheet for Wolves and there are chances that Wood might get something from this game. I'm thinking of keeping him this week. Now I have a chance to probably go to even Vardy, but don't think so, he has done enough to justify a place in our team. Other transfers are Cavani whose minutes might be limited or Watkins. The Villa forward gave an assist against City so he could also be an option. Guys, the transfer that we have in mind this week is Trent in place of Phillips. There's still an injury doubt on Phillips concerning his hamstring. He didn't play against Leeds and he might not start the next game. Now we have the cash and I think this is a good long term move. Trent has been brilliant over the last few weeks. The best defender without a doubt. I think I'm almost certain that I'm going to make this transfer this week. We'll see if getting another transfer makes sense before the deadline. I think it would be Watkins in place of Wood as Villa play West Brom. Still not sure whether it's worth a minus 4 
West Brom haven't been that bad defensively over the last couple of games. Great guys, everything else is done. Now let's look at some captaincy options. I personally feel this week Liverpool duo would be in pretty high demand in terms of captaincy. Now Newcastle are still conceding goals and that bodes well for Mo Salah and Diego Jota. I think it's safe to assume that Salah should start this one and he's probably a better captaincy option than Jota. Guys, Bruno Fernandes is another option. He has returned in only two of his last seven games, but he got his highest points against Leeds in the reverse fixture. I still think the Liverpool players are a better bet, but in case you don't have them and you want to take a chance with Bruno, he definitely has all the tools to do well against Leeds. Now, there are some alternate options as well in case you're okay taking a few chances. Watkins is a great option against West Brom. They have improved a bit recently, but overall they have the leakiest defence in the league this season. Inacho against Palace is another one that you can target. Palace don't have a lot to play for now this season. It's unlikely that they will get relegated and I don't think so that they will reach the top half of the table. Inacho has been in great form, so yeah, it's a risk, but I feel it's worth taking this week. Now guys, if you really want to take your chances, there are three one-week captaincy punts as well. Sheffield are relegated from the league and they have nothing left this season. Brighton generally don't convert a lot of their chances, but still Welbeck could be a great one-week punt against the Blades. Our second option, Traore, has been returning in the absence of Neto with three returns in his last three games. Burnley don't sit back and defend nowadays, so there is potential for Traore in this game. A third option, Jamie Vardy against Palace is another good pick, but seeing that Vardy hasn't really done much even against the weaker teams, I would be a little adamant going there. So that'll be all for this video, guys. We'll be back on Friday with our Game Week 33 stream. It might not be a deadline stream this time around, but we'll let you know. Guys, do let us know if you have any questions or team selection dilemma. We'll surely help you out. Don't forget to hit the like button if you liked today's video, guys. Please do subscribe to our channel Insanely Football if you're new around here. Thank you so much if you stayed with us till this long. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in Saners next time.